Let's talk about Hong Kong. Back in 1984, the United Kingdom decided that they were going to hand Hong Kong over to the People's Republic of China, also known as Communist China, in what was called the Sino-British Joint Declaration. Under this new agreement, Hong Kong would retain a great deal of autonomy with their English-influenced legal system for at least another 50 years, expected to last from 1997 to 2047 under what is called the one country, two systems principle, meaning that Hong Kong should enjoy at least another 24 years of relative freedom. However, the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, a regime that is not too fond of dissent or political opposition, has long sought to undermine the one country, two systems approach. This issue became of greater focus in the United States in 2019. After Hong Hong Kong proposed a new extradition law. Many feared that the proposed law would open the door for greater CCP influence in Hong Kong. The proposed law was met with widespread protests in Hong Kong, which saw many protesters waving the American flag. The protest received much greater attention in the United States after then Houston Rockets GM Daryl Morey expressed his support for the protests on Twitter. Considering that the National Basketball Association and many of its star players have ties and business relations in China, including the Houston Rockets, the team that Chinese basketball sensation Yao Ming played for throughout his entire career, Daryl Morey ended up causing a shitstorm in the NBA the sports media, and the political landscape, as NBA stars like LeBron James were exposed for being giant hypocrites. Because after virtue signaling on issues relating to social justice, LeBron James not only showed zero support or sympathy for the Hong Kong protesters, but also scrutinized Daryl Morey for doing so himself. What an asshole! The CCP responded to Morey's support for the Hong Kong protests by suspending NBA game broadcasts for nearly three years in China. While the proposed extradition law would eventually be revoked, during the summer of 2020, the National People's Congress in mainland China would pass a new national security law to impose on Hong Kong. Many have considered this act by the National People's Congress to be the discarding of the one country, two systems agreement, as the new national security law gives gives agents from mainland China broad authority over Hong Kong. Protests are essentially prohibited and certain slogans have been criminalized, with books being removed from shelves and teenagers getting arrested for posting about independence on social media. One high-profile arrest includes Jimmy Lai, a media mogul and longtime critic of the CCP. Jimmy Lai's newspaper, The Apple Daily, would also get shut down as a result result of the national security law. After police raided the company's headquarters and froze the company's assets, the newspaper was essentially unable to operate. And according to Bloomberg Businessweek, many other organizations have since closed down. While schools in Hong Kong are rewriting curricula to teach children obedience to China. And this does not even mention the wide variety of other reasons to be a little bit skeptical skeptical of communist China, who also silenced doctors in the early days of COVID for trying to warn people about a new contagious virus, before resorting to draconian measures in pursuit of the CCP's insane zero COVID strategy. And who could forget the CCP's long history of repression? And this brings me to California Governor Goofy-ass Gavin Newsom, who seems really proud of the fact that he got to sit down with CCP leader Xi Jinping, saying that we cannot solve the climate crisis without working together. Blow it out your ass. Yes, apparently Gavin Newsom thinks that Xi Jinping and the CCP are just honest statesmen that can be trusted to honor agreements. That's just not 
smart. Even after acknowledging how horrible the CCP can be. Although, in all fairness, considering that reducing carbon emissions almost always means some degree of economic planning or violations of individual rights, I guess I can see why someone like Gavin Newsom would think that the CCP is up to the challenge. But even on this issue, the CCP has a history of disregarding pledges and agreements. It was reported during the Obama years that China pledged to reduce carbon emissions, including signing on to the Paris Climate Agreement. Yet according to Alex Epstein's book, Fossil Future, As of 2019, 85% of China's energy production comes from fossil fuels, with 64% coming from coal power alone. While this 2021 piece from Bloomberg Businessweek reports that China is not only the world leader in carbon emissions, but emits as much CO2 as the following four countries combined. Even China's recent 2021 pledge to reduce carbon emissions already a appears to be worthless, as it's been reported that China is moving forward with building new coal power plants. This piece from The Hill reports that this all makes sense, considering that the CCP is more interested in establishing itself as a geopolitical superpower, perhaps surpassing if not replacing the United States, an ambition that is a bit at odds with crippling its economy and energy needs. You would think that US politicians like Gavin Newsom would exercise greater judgment when trying to work with untrustworthy dictatorships who seek to replace the United States as the geopolitical superpower. Yeah, let's work with these guys on reducing America's capacity to produce and grow economically. How about new? No? And this does not even mention the increased costs and pain for consumers that Gavin Newsom's energy policies have had. A topic that I've talked about many times in great detail if you're interested. Anyway, it might be worth keeping all of this in mind if Gavin Newsom decides to run for president sometime in the near future as many have speculated. It might be amusing to watch this monumental goof try to explain this to people outside of the California bubble. Explain why Americans should be expected to pay more for stuff like utilities and transportation and other goods and services. After doubling down on solar and wind mandates fails once again. All while we're expected to trust communist China to hold up their end of the bargain. At the very least, it might be amusing to watch Watch Gavin Newsom have to go to swing states like Michigan and explain to the people in the automotive industry why his ban on gas combustion vehicles would be a wise nationwide policy. <laughs> 